I'm Troy Kirby with MLT News with a quick look at the 2021 Washington State Legislative Session. The House Public Safety Committee heard testimony on House Bill 1344, which would give possible early release to those incarcerated for long sentences if they committed the crime prior to age 25. But excessive and long-term sentences for young people only exacerbate harm in communities by isolating them from their families, support systems, and providing little or no rehabilitation. We are open to and, and uh, welcome the discussion on emerging adults. I know the Criminal Sentencing Task Force right now is in the midst of reevaluating the current sentencing grid. We think that that's a wonderful place to continue this type of conversation. It allows for a wholesale review of current sentencing practices and would allow that to be put into a place where you could evaluate the whole system rather than taking uh, little bits at a time. The House Public Safety Committee also heard testimony on House Bill 1449, which would create the crime of coercive control. And I would, I would offer that there's two pandemics. There's the COVID pandemic that we're all living in currently, and then there's also the hidden pandemic of domestic violence. Uh, one in four women, one in seven men, um, are affected by violent relationship behavior in their lifetime. I speak to you today uh, from two different lenses. I am the director of programs for Peaceful Living, which is the accredited domestic violence, sexual assault, crime victim agency for Klickitat County. Um, I also speak to you as a survivor. Um, and um, I can tell you, yes, Representative Moss Brecker, I agree 100%. This pandemic is forcing survivors to be stuck in the home with their abusers. I am testifying today in strong opposition to HB 1449. No one should have to endure course of controlling their relationship. We want to thank the survivors, lawmakers, and member programs who are educating the public about the impacts of course of control. This work is vital to supporting and affirming survivors in their healing and creating healthy communities and relationships. When exactly. forming our legislative positions, we talk with a wide range of programs and survivors. While there's not always complete consensus given the complexity, the issue, and varied experiences, our coalition has to raise up the unintended consequences when we have serious concerns about their impact on survivor safety. We know that laws designed with the best intentions to support survivors can be the very same laws that an abusive and controlling partner can use against their partner. I um, am a domestic violence survivor. I have uh, sustained um, physical and emotional abuse for over 10 years. Um, it began um, with more of a financial uh, restrictions, um, more of uh, sheltering me from family and friends, uh, more of uh, verbal uh, things that, you know, yelling or whatever, if I didn't cook dinner right or or didn't wake up on time or, uh, and you know, or answer the phone when he called, or et cetera, which was never reciprocated in the other direction. It was always just uh, towards me. And so I became literally a prisoner uh, in, in my house. We have grave concerns about adding coercive control to the criminal code because this expansion will likely lead to survivors being arrested, less likely to contact law enforcement for help and increased criminalization of communities of color. Thank you for watching the Daily Legislative Report by MLT News, covering the 2021 legislative session.